five competitions in five countries. The top amateur skaters in the world have competed for points, money, and glory. This afternoon, the final begins. The champions will be crowned in Paris. American Michelle Kwan has been dominant all season. World champion Lu Chen is close behind. And Jose Chouinard tries to recover from disappointment at the Canadian Championship. Olympic gold medalists Grichuk and Platov set the tempo in the dance. Canadian born in Kratz look to continue their ascent. Elvis Stoiko attempts to overtake his Olympic rival, Alexei Ermanov. The Bank of Montreal Champion Series Final on CTV. Bonjour. Welcome to Paris. I'm standing outside the Louvre, home to some of the finest works of art in the world. We're here for artistry of a different kind, the finals in the Bank of Montreal Champion Series. This is the culmination of a five-event series that began in late October. And there's big money on the line, over $650,000 U.S. in prize money. And the winners here in Paris could be the ones to watch at the World Figure Skating Championships in Edmonton. To set up the action at the Palais Omnisport, my colleagues, Barb Underhill and Dan Matheson. A lot of excitement about this competition, especially in men's and women's singles competition, what with the World Championships coming up very shortly. In both, we have two great contenders really going hammer and tongs, and a couple of dark horses who could come up from behind. Now, Barb, let's start with the men's competition. We've got Alvis Stoiko. He's our guy. We know what Alvis can do. Two-time world champion, athletic skater, but he's facing a guy who really feels he has something to prove. Well, Alexei Ermanov has probably been the most consistent skater all year long. He is looking extremely good. He's very determined because he doesn't have a world title, and he wants that very, very badly. Elvis started the year out kind of slowly, made some changes, and now he's very, very hot. If you want to compare both skaters, technically, Elvis is better. He's, he's so determined to get that quad combination in. But I think artistically, Ermanov is going to weigh a little bit. Um, it's going to... He's going to have the edge artistically because the judges seem to like his style a little bit better. And we, so. have, we have a similar kind of confrontation if when you look at the women's competition because you've got Lu Chen from China, the world champion. She's a very elegant, beautiful skater. Well, and if she skates very, very well, she will win because she has the most complete package. Against? Against? Against a very athletic skater, a, a, almost coltish, just a 15-year-old from, from the United States, Michelle Kwan, who is a magnificent skater mm -hmm. in her own right. But when you see the two on the ice... Again, you, you have that same kind of controlled, dignified uh, sense to a, to a Chen mm -hmm. against the athleticism mm -hmm. of a Kwan. Well, Michelle Kwan is still young. She's still developing her style, but she has that mental toughness that Elvis has, and that's what counts. She's been extremely consistent, and I think that's why we have to give her the edge. It's uh, ironic, too, that you mention mental toughness mm -hmm. as we talk about the contenders <coughs> in women's competition. We don't mention Jose in the same breath as the other two, even though she has a package which is should put her Dynamite, there. and she, she could win if she could do it. Yeah, if she could ever get it together in the long mm -hmm. program. Also coming up today, Shin, uh, Shayla... Paris has been well-traveled by a group of men that all have the potential to be world champions. Being number one is not uncommon for the competitors in Paris. Urmanov won Skate Canada. Eldridge, Skate America. Stoiko, NHK. Kulik took Trophée de France. And Zagorodniak, the Nations Cup. Eric Milo has the hearts of the spectators. It's hard to predict the outcome of this event. The men's competition will be a matter of the best of the best. Skating to be number one. time defending world champion with his work cut out for him this season because Ermanov has looked so strong and this is uh, this is a short routine we've seen before the speedway routine he's got the checkered flag vest on and this really motors well I love this one this is one of those routines that we call it the edge of your seat routine he gets everybody 
involved in this. Very exciting. He opens with the easiest of the jumps, double axle, just for a little warm up. Combination, triple axle, right there, double toe, he should have, he had a triple toe planned on the end, but he did a double. A little bit cautious there. Here's some triple lutz. was part of the big story with Elvis this competitive year is that he finally trashed his new long program and went back to music that he liked from last year. Well, he was skating to Last of the Mohicans and he felt very uncomfortable skating to a tragedy and went back to his old, old program, the Columbus Routine, and it has really made a big difference in his year. That's a lot of work. Well, that's going to be tough to beat, except for the fact that he did do a triple-double combination. There's going to be skaters out here trying the triple-triple combination. That'll set them up higher technically than Elvis. One of the things that I think a lot of Canadians have to remember is that we, we're pretty used to having world champions in the we men's division. We sure division. are. From we Brian Orser spoiled. through Kurt Browning into Elvis, that's an awful lot of world championships in the past decade. But the men's field right now is so deep and so full of great talent that even when you skate as well as Elvis has skated here, he's catchable. He sure is. There, th Anyone there's is a handful of people catchable. here. Anyone is catchable right now. So these marks are very important. One 5.8, all the rest five sixes and five sevens. Well, remember, he is the first to skate as well. They don't know what, what else is, is to come. There's likely going to be a triple-triple combination. They have to save those marks. Hopefully, we're going to see the second set come up. Oh, and they don't come up as much as I thought they would. Well, they're almost all 5.7s, but for the 5.6. And if the judges are leaving room at the top, they've left quite a bit. Well, they have. but it all, it, it, <laughs> In other words, that's not what they're doing. Well, it all depends on how many mistakes we see and how many clean performances. So we've made much today, of course, of the matchup between Elvis and Alexei Ermanov, but here's uh, just one more of the many good young skaters who could really make an impact. This is Vyacheslav Zagrodniak from Ukraine. And he's had a fantastic year. Not only did he win the Nations Cup, but he also won the Europeans, which was a, a, a huge surprise and a big win for him. I think it's given him a lot of confidence. Well, a very big step up for him, too, after a very disappointing North American swing when he was fourth at Skate America, sixth at Skate Canada, and he kind of slunk away with his tail between his legs, at least for North America, but ever since, he's been hotter than a pistol. Triple axle, triple toe. There we see it, right on. Did we mention he could jump? 
<laughs> I think that's a given. But I think the area where he doesn't quite reach the upper, the top group is is artistically. He has yet to develop a style that really reaches out and grabs the audience. Technically, though, he's right up there. Well, what part uh, part of the reason for his problems in the early part of the season apparently was he spent the summer in Odessa, which is his home, and they had frequently temperatures well up into the 30s, and they had bad ice. Ooh, a little wobble there. Bad ice almost all summer. He had very bad training and preparation. This season. Well, when you consider the conditions that the Russians have to deal with, they're really not playing on a level playing field. Uh, but I think with the new champion series and the fact that they're now making some money, they're, they're, they're going to be able to, in the future year, years, be on a level playing field. Well, if they're not playing on a level playing field, how come there's so many good ones? <laughs> and where do they keep coming from? I keep wondering that. Zagorodnik is one of those skaters still looking for the image or the style that will entirely suit him. Started as a Petrenko clone. Flawless. Aside from the Lutz, which had a, a tiny wobble, this is one area I think he can improve. His spins aren't really of the quality that I think he could probably achieve. He's 23, Vyacheslav Zagrodnyak from Ukraine. But as you can see by the response from the audience, they've already almost stopped clapping. That is where he needs to develop. He needs to develop some rapport with the audience. Either that or just a new style that, that can really involve them and create some sort of emotion. He was sixth at the World Championships last year. Looking to make a move now, that would certainly help him heading toward Edmonton. These marks aren't bad. Although there's quite a range, the Canadian judge has given him the 5-5. Five, five. His marks go up to 5.8 for required elements. And I don't think we're going to see the presentation marks go up. Well, not a lot of change. One 5.8, but they do range between 5.5 again and 5.8 for Vyacheslav Zagorodnyuk of the Ukraine. Well, he's going to get make you think that he's been there and back, but actually, he's a real late bloomer as a skater, and he's been getting better and better the last couple of years. He has just basically arrived onto the scene this year and last, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that he discovered the triple axel. He, he finally got that. It's not extremely consistent for him yet, but you absolutely have to have it to be in the top group. That gives him the extra added confidence. But he tends to always sort of have one little error that keeps him out of it. He seldom puts two program, clean programs back to back. Here's the triple axel. Very well done. But he skates with so much passion, and when he's skating well, he can really, really connect with an audience. And this audience would want to be connected with. <laughs> this is his crowd. And it's nice that he's finally emerged from the shadow of Leaf Candeloro. There's a triple flip. Because Philippe became so popular in this country last year and this year's been out due to injury so it's it's, it's given there. him the chance yes <laughs> mm -hmm. 
He was third at Skate Canada, which seems forever ago now, doesn't it? Uh, then was second at the uh, Trophée de France behind Kulik. Ermanov won in St. John. Barb, you mentioned uh, Candeloro. Milo was the French champion before Candeloro came along on the scene. And that must be a little bit upsetting to a skater to have the young whippersnapper kind of kick you off the podium. And, oh, look at I mean, he is really working his jumping to push himself from that second tier of skaters into the first tier. And good for him for, for coming back, for not quitting at, at, at his age especially. He has a wife, he has a child at home, and he says that has even given him more confidence, more passion in his skating. Final spin here. Whoa! He held on to that. <laughs> now that was a very unusual problem on that spin. It all comes down to concentration. I'm sure he was thinking to himself. It's over. It's over. I've done it. And that happens so often to skaters. It happened to me on a slip spin at the Olympics. When, when you let your concentration go just for a split second. I don't know how much that'll affect him. It'll be a very minor deduction. Overall, though, that was a very clean performance. Eric Milo of France, and certainly he's being rewarded by the fans in Paris. <laughs> and it's nice for him to be able to perform in Paris and gain that fan support that that he needs. Well, the fans won't be nuts about these no. marks. A couple of 5.4s, 5.5s, peaking at 5.8 from the French judge. But remember, they started with a very low base when they started with Elvis. They didn't go crazy on his marks, so they have to mark these accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> well, the marks for presentation up to a couple of 5.9s. These marks are very good. He's in second place in the men's short program. He has to be pleased with that. Extremely. Now, there are Stoiko and Ermanov, and I guess we'll find out in the next two minutes and change whether or not that, in fact, is going to happen. Alexei Ermanov, the man who won the gold medal at the Olympic Games, beating Elvis in Lillehammer. But Elvis, of course, has come back to win the next two world championships. Well, but so this is the guy. So much depends on the opening triple axel combination because if he doesn't do it, he's looking at fifth or sixth spot. If he does do it, he's looking at first or second. Triple axel, triple toe loop. There you have it. Urbanoff is not one of those skaters who often self-destructs. Once in a while, we've seen it, actually, but he's he's come around this year. He's, he's gotten much more consistent in his skating. And he had a hard time after the Olympics dealing with that title. And there's the triple Lutz, but he's been very solid and consistent this year. He comes to the final as the winner of Skate Canada. He finished second at the Nations Cup to Vyacheslav Zagrodnyak. And he had to withdraw from the European Championships earlier this year because of an, a problem with his eyes. is another one of those skaters who very interestingly has captured the judges without always capturing the audiences they look at the stone face a face without much passion they look at the costumes which are a little on the bizarre side and they look at a performance which seems to lack passion which seems to lack connection with the audience it's it's an introspective 
performance. It's a performance he does only for himself. That's the sense you get as you watch it. And I'm always a sucker for the emotional performances. Those are the ones that grab me. Ermanov ba basically is an emotionless skater, but he's extremely artistic in, in a very classical nature, and the judges seem to be able to relate to that. He's really carved out a niche for himself as the most flamboyant in terms of the costume and the overall look. Well, technically, that was stronger than Elvis in terms of the combination. He did the triple axle, triple toe loop combination. I don't know how he did it because when he did it, he almost came to a standstill after the first jump. I don't know how he pulled that triple off the end. Program, and look at these marks. Up to 5.9 for required elements. Remember, Elvis was pretty much 5.7s across the board. Ermanoff, who, oh, now he'll take a look. <laughs> uh, had a couple of 5.7s, but boy, those marks were very strong. And the judges always like him here. There's your leader, Alexei Ermanoff, after the short program, is in first place. And he plans to beat Elvis Stoiko, but I'll tell you what, it could be a real barn burner of a long program because Elvis has got the quad. This guy, well, who knows what kind of an outfit he'll win. Quan, Schwinard, and Chen all find themselves in Paris, the culmination in the champion series. Lu Chen shot at NHK, where her solid jumps gave her first place. Jose Schwinard skated a flawless short program at Trophée de France. Then there's 15-year-old Michelle Kwan, who swept Skate America, Skate Canada, and the Nations Cup. Also trying to win, rising star Irina Slutskaya, third at Skate America, Olga Markova, Maria Butruskaya, and Hanae Yokoya. All of these women intend to make the contest fierce in Paris. Skaya Michelle Kwan, the European champion. Uh, Slutskaya Michelle Kwan, of course, is the U.S. champion and the three-time former Canadian champion, Jose Schwinnard. Luchan's had a bit of a bumpy season. She started out a little slow. She was beat at, Trophée de or at Skate America by Michelle Kwan and then again at Trophée de France by Jose Chouinard. She finally won at NHK. So she really has some difficulties putting it down when it counts. But when she does, she is simply the best. She has it all. There is no weak area in her skating. speed going into this triple lutz combination. Very well done. her programs, the short and long, are choreographed by Sandra Bezik, and they are absolutely exquisite. She's Chore a marvelous interpreter. Well, speaker. and her arms and hands are just so beautiful to watch, and they add an extra element to her level and quality of her skating. That was a beautiful triple toe loop. And everything is choreographed right down to the last detail.
she is such an elegant skater quiet and controlled who really seems to be moved by the music and that's not something that's easy to teach she's extremely musical and I think when you compare her skating with say Michelle Kwan she also has she's she's a more powerful skater she has more speed and it's it's the little tiny tiny details that really set sets her apart She has been the Chinese national champion since 1991, the reigning world champion, 19-year-old Lu Chen of China. And she could not have skated that short program any better. The quality of the jumps was, was perfect. It was just an exquisite program to watch. The judges always take their time with the first skater, and they always have to leave a little room at the top, and boy, are they in uh, accord on this. 5.7 sure right across the board for required elements. And I'm sure we're going to see the presentation marks come up. Boy, I didn't see a twitch in that face, though. No reaction no, whatsoever. No, she's looking very, very seven. serious. Well, you're absolutely right. Almost all 5.8s but the one. So certainly she has set the standard. We now know what you have to do. Put yourself in competition and contention. Now here's a youngster who's causing uh, a real sensation in Paris. She's 17, Irina Slutskaya from Russia. And it's hard to believe, but this teenager is the first woman figure skater ever to win an international seniors, uh, seniors title representing either Russia or the old Soviet Union. She and won the European in January. She's absolutely a joy to watch. She has such a an energy about her that, that makes makes it just really fun to watch her. And I think we're seeing a skater here where the, the pressure really hasn't hit her yet. As opposed to Lu Chen, who is, as world champion, has a tremendous load on her shoulders. But Sky has absolutely nothing to lose. Here's her triple F combination. Very well done. And a triple loop. Look at this layback spin. Great speed, beautiful position. Now you can really see the difference in the quality artistically between Lu Chen and Slutskaya. She's out here. Every little movement is not choreographed. She, she's a little bit wild with her arms and just not quite as refined as, as Lu Chen yet, but she's still very, very young. Great energy. Effervescent. She has huge height in her jumps. There's her double axle, the last of the required jumps. Not only is she a very solid jumper, but she's also one of the best spinners in the field. interesting Irina doesn't say the first prerequisite to be a successful figure skater is spins or jumps she says it's nerves of steel that's exactly right she said a clear head is what it needs to get you to the top and it's so true there's a combination spin straight up into the Beelman spin on, on both, both legs <laughs> <laughs> she's amazing <laughs> Well, you can't really ask old. for more than that. And you know, it's been said that she's really just recently come out of her shell 
uh, she was working in some shadows back home for the longest time, and it was the, maybe the European Championship that the big win there that just helped her with her confidence, helped her break out of herself, and uh, she now skates with such abandonment. Mm -hmm. Well, not a lot of agreement, well, actually. It's interesting that they range from 5 5 the Canadian champion who lost to Jennifer Robinson in Ottawa this year, but she's in contention here. This is a place she loves to skate. And also she's had very, very good luck with this short program. She's skated it very well all season, and it really, really works for her. How she's feeling confidence wise after the loss at Canadians whether she's a little fragile or whether she's more determined than ever and I think we'll see here on this triple lut what state she's at <laughs> fine <laughs> well, she looks happy with that well we all know that she can do it when she performs up to uh, her potential, one of those times, was right here in Paris at the Trophée de France when she beat the world champion, Lou Chen, and Surya Bonnelly, the hometown favorite, to win the title. And Bonnelly didn't, doesn't even make it this far. Boy, she'd love to be there. Well, you know, I'm sure we'll see her, Bonnelly, very determined at the world championships. And not only that, Midori Ito will be showing up as well. So we'll be seeing a whole new competition at Worlds. And unfortunately, it will not include Jose. Close it out a little bit tight on the landing. Canada's own Jose Schoenard, and she is going to be in contention. Definitely. I think that performance is, is up there with Schoenard, or sorry, with, with Chen and with Skaya. It's a matter of where they're going to place her. Artistically, this program for me is much better than Slitskaya, so I imagine this is, this is going to be between Chen and Schoenard. Well, it is one of those programs, this Kamsi Kansa program, which is tailor-made and is perfect for her personality and her talent. This is second place in the point standings coming into this final in Paris. The mark. I think of all the elements, her, her spiral sequence was quicker than Lu Chen's. The well, this mark should be very strong. maybe a little bit tight today. Lu Chen, I think was more solid on her jump. Hey, up 5.9. I don't think we've seen one of those yet in women's competition. Those are very good marks. 5.6 to 5. Oh. And the style of Born in Traps. The battle on the women's side is between American Michelle Kwan, the queen-to-be, trying to defeat the world champion Lu Chen. The Canadian in the mix, Jose Schwedard, trying to exercise the demon. In men's competition, it's the Olympic battle all over again. The artistry of Alexei Urmanov. And this man, king of the world, Elvis Stoiko.
They've come to the Champion Series final at the Pele Omni Sport de Petit Bercy. The Eiffel Tower, probably the most recognizable landmark in Paris, a city steeped in history. And history will be made tonight at the Pele Omni Sport as the first champions are crowned in the Bank of Montreal Champion Series in the grand finale. We'll have the free skates in all four disciplines tonight. Now, the story after the short program, the judging was decisive in the men, pairs, and dance competition. The women's division is still wide open. With their thoughts on the free skate tonight, here's our commentators, Barb Underhill and Dan Matheson. We're going to open tonight with the long program, women's competition. And I'll tell you, this has not gone exactly according to Hoyle. We've got all kinds of question marks and balls juggling up in the air. Michelle Kwan in fourth mm -hmm. place. What's happening there? I don't think we can count her out yet because we know what she can do in the long program. You have to look at who's on top. Lu Chen, who, if she skates well, will win. She's a magnificent but, skater. She's the world champion. Yeah, yeah, but she also has problems with, with contending with the pressure. With Yee, that brings us to our number two person. Jose Schwinnard, who we also know, if she skates well, can win. But um, this program, this year, she is yet to really, really prove herself with this long program mm -hmm. as well. We have to look at Irina Slitsk. Slitskaya because she is absolutely awesome. She won the European Championship. She's a joy to watch. She's in third. She can win. Boy, it's Jose and the three teenagers, huh? <laughs> Have to watch, won't you? Of course, every time you get down to the championship final, the free skate, the long program, is how strong is the skater between the ears? And that is, in fact, the, the question many, many times. Because when you get to this level of skater, you're looking at an awful lot of talent. Rina Slutskaya starts Lu Chen, the world champion, is second. Jose Schwinnard, wearing the Canadian colors, and the American champion, Michelle Kwan, will be fourth. Uh, they are all great skaters. Any one of these four skaters, there's Chen, the world champion, could win this thing if they skated up to their potential. And so very often it comes down to how tough they are. And this is how they stack up. Lu Chen against Ju Jose Schwinnard, technically. Um, Lu Chen has six triples planned. She opens with a triple Lutz. Jose has seven planned, but she, she opens with a triple Sal in order to warm up for the triple Lutz. And we wanted to show you that because they are the leaders. Chen on top after the short program. Schwinnard in second place. In third spot, this young lady, Irina Slutskaya of Russia, 17 years of age, a very exciting young performer. You'll notice she's not as polished as some of the, some of the others, but a great jumper, terrific energy, great speed, and certainly she's going to be a champion somewhere, sometime. But what I find most about her skating is that she has this joy about it because she doesn't have the pressure that the other skaters have. So she's very exciting to watch. Opening here with the triple Lutz. A little low on the landing, but she goes straight into the double toe loop. And when she skates well, she just lights up. She's skating to a medley of American musical. Triple Sal, double loop. Very light. Junior champion last year, Slitskaya finished third at Skate America, fourth in Paris, and slips into the champions round, edging Surya Bonnelly of France, which is most fitting perhaps since Bonnelly was the five-time European champion that Slitskaya dethroned earlier this year. And we will be seeing Surya Bonnelly at the Worlds later this month along with Midori Ito, so I think our look at the World Championships is going to be a lot different. Not a problem here today. At 
the European Championships in Bulgaria, she had six faultless triple jumps. Wow, she's just right on. shocked me after the huge success Russian and Soviet skaters have had over the years that she is the first Russian or Soviet single female skater to win a major title. That's right. Nobody had from Russia had yet won the European Championship. So it has been in the past years that they were not strong in women's competition. It's just been over the last couple of years they've really... That's because they're all in pair skating, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a dance. <laughs> putting the pressure on Chen and Shuinard ahead of her because she's been faultless up to this point. There's her Beelman spin. And Chen and, and Shuinard are really gonna have to skate. That's a duplicate of the performance that she put on at the Europeans. Boy, still just a kid. 17-year-old Irina Slutskaya, sickly youngster, and uh, mom got her into skating to get her in the pink, which is certainly where she is now. Look at those marks. And look at this triple Lutz. Very good height. Little low on the landing, but she pulls it off. And she knows how to win. She says it takes nerves of steel, and you've <laughs> got to have a very clear head. Second set of marks. Boy, are these strong. There's a 5-6 in the lot, but otherwise 5-7s and 5 eight, So. The youngster from Russia has set the standard for all the others that will come behind. That was an outstanding performance. Now, Lu Chen is the world champion, and she is very capable of turning in uh, not only an outstanding performance, but just about a flawless performance. She is such an elegant skater, controlled, disciplined, with fine movements of the hands and the fingers, and she never seems to waste a movement, and she feels the music so wonderfully. I think we think of her as the veteran here, but she's only 18 years of age, and I think we have to keep remembering that. And there's a huge amount of pressure on her here as the world champion, the current world champion, and that really puts a lot on your shoulders. international competition as the Chinese national champion, which to be fair, didn't say much in 92. She's opening with a triple Lutz. Oh my goodness. She was not over top of that foot when she landed. That's very costly. Extremely. Because now this is a huge challenge for her to really get she back has on to track. Be faultless. And she's got a very difficult triple flip coming up. So she's got to calm herself down. Triple flip. There she does that very nicely. that she went to the Worlds and finished third and did it again in 93. She missed in 94 because of an ankle injury. And then but last won year, it all last year won. in Birmingham. That, of course, was after the previous generation of top skaters had moved on, Oksana Bayul and Nancy Kerrigan. Here's a triple loop. She's looking cautious, and she popped it. 
could tell in her eyes she just sort of lost her focus there for a second and was not looking confident and she's given jump. up any chance of winning well after the performance of Slitskaya, she would have had to been almost flawless but with room for maybe one error but i think now these two errors have cost her the championship respectable second at Skate America beaten by Michelle Kwan. She finished a very respectable second in Paris to Jose. And here's her second triple as she really needs this and she popped that as well. She's totally lost her focus. This performance now is opening the door for Michelle Kwan, who is sitting in fourth. If Lu Chen finishes lower than third, Michelle Kwan can win this whole event with a clean performance. Well, we talked about Michelle Kwan after the short program. Surprising what happened to her there, but apparently she's been suffering with the flu, so she could be very capable of really, really coming through in the free skate. She gets in a triple toe loop there. When she does them, they look effortless. <laughs> so you will see both spellings, actually, in uh, dispatches from around the world. This is not surprising. Perhaps the only one that is surprising is that 5.6 from the Chinese judge right in the middle. Uh, a 5 and a 5-1. These marks are poor. She came into the long program, the leader in this competition. She will not be the leader now. Marks her presentation. Uh, also, the Chinese judge giving her the best for this category, 5.8 there. These marks better than the previous set, but she will not be a contender for the top couple of spots. Irina Slutskaya is your lawyer for Jose Schwinard. And we said you got to be tough to win. And this is the one category where Jose has come up short so many times. She has all the skills. Well, this program, she is yet, even though she did win Trophée de France, it wasn't a clean performance. She has yet to skate this program clean. And with Slutsky having skated so well, she needs to skate clean. She also did the triple sow. She's looking quite comfortable, actually. But it, it will be the opening triple Lutz that will tell the story here. Well, we've seen that before. She was just not over top of herself whatsoever in that jump. She does it time and time again in practice. She just can't seem to put it down when it counts. And that, of course, is precisely what we saw from Jose in Ottawa when she came back from the professional ranks to make what she said was her run at, at, at a world title. She wanted to go to Edmonton. She was looking to win the Canadian Championship as her ticket to Edmonton, and she couldn't beat Jennifer Robinson because she fell. Triple flip. She turns out of it. Now, in order for her to stay on the podium, 
she can't give up at this point. She's got to stick in every triple that she can do. Which happened, which didn't happen at the Canadians, where she started to pull out of triples and started doing doubles. She needs to fight this through. Triple loop, she didn't give up on that one. triple lap and she doubled it. Nineteen ninety four was the year that Schwinard felt she had completely self destructed as an amateur competitive skater. Recently crowned three time Canadian champion, she finished well up the track at the Worlds and the Olympics and almost in disgust, quit competitive skating to become a professional, but then felt the sense maybe that she hadn't ever accomplished as much as she thought she should be able to do. She pulled out that last triple toe loop. Well, she certainly had some problems out here again today. Louis Thong and Michelle Kwan watching on. Uh, Louis, the coach, of course, Kwan about to skate. Jose had been second after the short program. And that definitely was not a winning performance. No, the youngster, Irina Slutskaya, is still going to be the leader after these marks. Well, I find with that particular routine it doesn't show as much of Jose's personality her spark and in order for that program really to work she has to do all the jumps and this was the first one she missed on and that was a triple lutz she was not over top of herself at all which so often happens the marks are just about what you would expect 5.4 through 5.6 pretty narrow range Well, you have to wonder what she's going to do after this event. I think she's got a lot of... Two years to Nagano is a do. long time. Jose mm -hmm. is 26 years old, which is not ancient by skating standards, but certainly by competitive standards. Uh, she's no kid anymore. <laughs> Speaking of kids, <laughs> of the contenders, the American champion, 15-year-old Michelle Kwan, who uh, really broke out last year and has just been riding a rocket ship. She's been winning almost everything in sight. The World Junior Champion in 94, fourth at the Senior Worlds last year. This year she won Skate America, won Skate Canada, won the Nations Cup. And she could very well win here. Now with Jose Schwinnard and Luchan out of the way, if she skates well, the door's open. She opens with a triple lutz, double toe. Not a lot of speed coming out of her jumps. Yes, her fate really does rest very much on her own shoulders now because after her fourth place finish in the short, you could almost write her off with all the talent in front of her. Wow. 
Triple, triple combination. We haven't seen one of those today. I, I don't think we're going to write her off now. <laughs> If you are new to Michelle Kwan, you would not believe how childlike this person is off the ice. What you're seeing is an almost complete facade of makeup and hair <laughs> and costuming to make this look like a mature woman. But this is a kid who can really skate. And that is what has made the difference, Dan, in, in her success this year. That was the one thing she lacked last year was the maturity in her skating. And so they decided to Give her maturity. <laughs> I guess her father really had a hard time with all the makeup and the, and the, the provocative costume. <laughs> Not on my daughter, you know. But boy, she responded to the challenge here and the opportunity. triple so far the world champion Lu Chan is currently in third place in the standings Canada's Jose Schwinard second this performance Michelle Kwan is going to eclipse both of them the only question is can she come out of fourth place and beat Irina Slutskaya she certainly has her sight set on first place well she cannot win without the help of Slutskaya because Slutskaya had to beat... Oh, there's her first mistake. I don't think that'll hurt her, though. She's done too much in this program. Because Chen had to be lower than third for Michelle to be able to move up from fourth. But she needed Slutskaya on her side. Magnificent. The coach, Frank Carroll, Jose Schrenard, knows that she has just been bounced down another rung. Well, the kids came through. <laughs> There's the coach, Frank Carroll, the man given the credit for reshaping the image, uh, going for what maybe Dad didn't like, but you know what? The judges like it, the fans like it, and that is a winning look. Well, he said last year, the only problem was age. They wanted a ladies' champion, not a girls' champion, and so they had to develop that, and it's worked. Mind you, she also has all the jumps. She certainly does. She's, she's developed um, more strength and more power this year as well. That was one of the criticisms last year was she didn't have a lot of height on her jumps or a lot of speed, and she's certainly worked on that. So here come the marks. Look at those marks. The American judge of 5'9", but all the rest are 5'8", but for the Canadian judge, who gives her a 5.7. And the triple-triple combination certainly helped. And this is the biggest difference between last year and this year. Again, 5'9", all 5'9s, a couple of 5'8s, you are looking at the champion. Michelle Kwan comes out of fourth place after the short program to claim the champion series. Just a remarkable performance. And there's no doubt in any of those judges' minds. Boy, there's lots more to come, so don't go standings after the women's free skate. In women's competition, Michelle Kwan comes from fourth to win it.
and you can see the rest of the field. Rob Fultz now with the Super have two Bowl. tiers in competition here in the long program of the men's competition. Ermanoff and Stoiko, as you mentioned, Rob, at the top, gunning for gold. Who will win the bronze? Well, maybe it might be Eric Milo or maybe Ilya Kulik. A couple of uh, gentlemen at opposite ends of the age spectrum for single skating. Uh, Eric is a late bloomer who has just really put the, the triples together. Uh, he skates for France and Ilya Kulik, a young, very talented, good-looking, lots of potential kind of kid from Russia who's still a little rough around the edges. But here's your order of skate. Kulik will lead off, followed by Elvis, Ermanov, and Milo. Yeah. Wants badly to beat Alexei Ermanov here in Paris. Ermanov, the gold medal winner from Lillehammer, the guy who many people, certainly many Canadians say, stole it from uh, Elvis Stoiko, who certainly had his revenge at the World Championships in 94 and 95. But he has his hands full now. Look at his eyes here. Look at how calm he looks. He's really focusing on doing the quad in this program because he knows that if he's going to beat Alexa, he's got to do it technically. He needs that quad. That's it. Four rotations. <laughs> that was so solid. Now the key for him here is to, to sort of reset. He's been so focused on that quad. He's got to reset himself and get ready for the triple axel. Triple loop plan here first. Very well done. Once again, in case you're joining us late, Elvis second after the short skate. Boy, we're not used to saying that, are we, Kathy? No. I love the way he feels absolutely every moment in the music. Getting the sense of deja vu, this is the music to the soundtrack, the movie 1492, Conquest of Paradise. The music he used last year and the program which, having abandoned it once, he went back to this year, feeling it was much more suited to him. Well, he thought that he really didn't give it a really fair shot last year either because of his injury. He felt that he, he could go further with this program. Here's another triple axel. He needs this. There we go.
looks like he's getting a little bit tired here. He's got a tough triple X plan here. Oh, triple, he tried to do the triple-triple combination right at the end. That was the co combination that won him the world championships last year. And he wow. falls out of that one. Well, some unfortunate little mistakes towards the end of the program. It was not vintage Stoiko, and it's amazing how deep we've talked about this, the field of men is. It's so deep that you can't afford mistakes like that. I think there was so much focus for him on that quad, and he did it. And after, it was just too tough to, to hold the program all the way through. So much energy goes into those four rotations. Well, it's a very demanding program. Mind you, the skaters that follow have to still nail their programs and their jumps, and Ermanov has yet to be heard from. There's the triple axel. And he just was too far wow. behind his Look how strong he skate is. to land. He's extremely strong, but he wasn't strong enough that time to push the free leg through. It's good height. Look at his head and the, his chin up in the air, trying to reach for that highest point. Well, some nervous moments here. That's Doug Lee on the right of your screen. And Bushy Kessler on the left. This is the championship team that runs the Mariposa gang. Five nines on the board for technical merit, a few five eights. And those marks perhaps not unexpected. The next set of marks though will tell the tale. Oh. Well, five eights, but also a couple of 5.7s. What it means is Ermanov has to skate well. Ermanov can't just loaf and win this thing. Five, five, eight, five, eight, five, eight. That Alexei Ermanov won the gold medal in Lillehammer. He had never in his life before that time won a major skating championship. And he had a really hard time living up to the, the title Olympic champion. He went to the Worlds after that. He placed fourth. Last year, he was again fourth at the Worlds. So he's very, very determined. But still a young man. He's just 22 years of age. And this is the year many people say he is coming into his own. Triple axel, double toe loop. He's become a very consistent skater this year and, and that was always his problem the last couple of years he just couldn't put it together when it count, counted well he certainly carved out a, a spot for himself all his own with with his choreography his costumes his kind of very impassive visage it's very difficult to tell that he's involved in this skate although the body would belie that uh, it takes huge amount of energy and dedication and passion to skate like this he just doesn't show it in his face well whereas elvis skates with his soul and every single nuance in the music alexi is is very emotionless and and simply is out there he's a much more classical artist and, and i think the judges seem to like that leading Elvis after the short program. He will have to make major errors not to hold on here. Triple Lutz. He 
doubled it bar because he doesn't think he needs it? No, I think it was just middle of the air. It didn't quite feel right, so he played it safe, came out after two revolutions. Maybe it's just me, but I find myself asking myself, why does the guy who skates this well wear such silly costumes? Well, as you said before, he's trying to carve himself a niche, and he has. He's, he's the most flamboyant skater <laughs> of all of them. And you know who he is. Triple loop. going to win and he knows it well he's yet to have made a mistake technically Elvis had the quad but Elvis also made a couple of errors Alexi has been very clean now watch this combination triple south double loop hop 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 <laughs> <laughs> triple toe loop that should nail it for him The Olympic champion, Alexei Ermanov. And he is certainly staking his claim for Edmonton. Eric Milo getting ready to take the center stage. We'll be back. That was a very solid one. A little wild on the landing there. But overall, the, the performance was flawless. He is the man from St. Petersburg, Russian Alexei Ermanov. The coach is Alexei Mishin. And here are the marks for technical merit, 5.7s and a couple of 5.8s. I think that's lower than well, most people expected. He didn't have a triple-triple combination, and he didn't have a second triple axle. So that's why we're seeing those marks. But I know these marks are going to come way up. And this is where he gets Elvis, all things being equal. 5.9s, there is a 5.7 from the American judge, and that's it. There's your champion, Alexei Ermanov, who this year won in Skate Canada, came second at the Nations Cup, has now won the Champion Series Championship. In a 4-3 split. Wow. But you know what? We haven't seen the last skater yet. Eric Milo of France has yet to skate, and this is a very popular competitor, certainly in Paris. He used to be the French champion before Philippe Candeloro took over and became the high-profile guy in town. Um, he looks kind of like a gunslinger, doesn't he? Like he wants to get that title back. He looks, he looks really nervous. I'm looking at his eyes here. This is uh, a lot of pressure for him, being in his home country, hometown crowd. He's sitting in third spot, so he's, he's right on the verge here. Hopefully he can pull it through. Eric Milo is 27. He's been around a long time, but in the last couple of years has added a couple of triples to his repertoire and has made himself an instant contender. Well, you need the triple axle in order to even get considered as one of the top contenders, and he finally was able to learn how to do it. He's getting to cowboy theme, I think, in preparation for Edmonton. <laughs> <laughs> and he opens with the triple axle. Oh, he was way off in the air there. 
that wasn't even close. You're right, he does look very tight, and it's, and it's interesting because he doesn't have a chance of catching Elvis or Alexei. But that was a beauty of a triple left. Oh, and he turned out of the double toe. It must simply be the fact that he's he, getting in front of the hometown yeah, crowd. He's got to relax. Very nice triple flip. Of course, third place is at stake here. Ilya Kulik currently holds that down. And he needs this triple axel. Same problem. of the landing foot without help from the free foot. <laughs> That's the only clean triple-triple combination we've seen in the competition. And that may have won him third spot. These male skaters are always known for throwing in the odd surprise at the end of the program. <laughs> you can do that in single skating. You can't do that in pair skating. Well, Phil, what the heck? I didn't do it before. Boy, he's covered all the country music bases, hasn't he? Yeah. And he's finishing very strong. Well, the triple axle wasn't there today, but he certainly pretty much got every other triple in the book. And you're right, Barb. Some early jitters, but then he really seemed to build and grow in confidence as the routine went on. And when he hit the, the triple-triple combination, he just seemed to fly after that. And that was not a planned combination. He just threw that in, and that is an extremely <laughs> difficult combination. <laughs> Eric Milo from France has been making a steady climb, seventh at the Olympics in 94 and then fifth at the Worlds last year. What's he going to do this year? Well, it depends a lot on that triple axle. He's got to get the triple axle, and if he can do it, then he can really challenge for a medal at Worlds, I believe. He's got this roping thing down pretty well, though. I think this program really goes over well with the crowd, and I think it will work in Edmonton for him. But he needs this triple axle. 
boy, what height. He's not over his landing leg at all, and he doesn't get enough rotation. He actually landed it forward. Well, he sure is a popular guy here. But he'll be up against Philippe Candeloro as well at World. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't get any easier, does it? <laughs> First set of marks, technical merit from a 5.3 up to 5.6. Boy, this is going to go right down to the wire. Second set of marks will decide who takes third place in this competition. Elvis knows he's been relegated to second behind Ermanov. The marks for presentation for Eric Milo will tell the tale up to a 5.8, and that is good enough. That is the bronze medal winner. Eric Milo of France takes third place. Ilya Kulik settles for fourth. So the final standings look like this with Alexei Ermanov on top, but I'll tell you, the ordinals tell the tale. It was close. Elvis was rated best by three judges, Germany, Canada, the U.S. Elvis Stoiko, second.